Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, viewers and listeners. This is the morning show. Mr. Elton Jones is off for some days. I have taken his place. This is your host, Arthur Butte. And for our political interviews this morning, we have Ms. Gracita Arangel, the leader of the PPA. And we will have one whole hour with her for she to really converse and put the PPA project towards the people so uh, the people can decide if the PP will be the right party to vote for to get into government. Ms. Gracita Arendelle, the floor is yours. Good morning, Mr. Butte. Uh, good morning, Pearl. Um, to you and to the radio listeners who have not um, heard my New Year's message, yeah. I want to take this opportunity to say Happy New Year. Thank you, thank uh, you. Prosperous New Year um, 2020. It's the start of a new year, start of a new decade yeah. even, and that gives hope. Um, we are very fortunate to be able to, in a very short period of time, uh, prepare our party to contest the elections of um, January the 9th upcoming. I have this morning, um, you know, you get up in the morning, I get my paper distributed to me, and I noticed that uh, the paper have given you your party and yourself, uh, uh, you a, say, platform. a platform, mm -hmm. and then, you know, uh, can you <laughs> really go into details and to so our viewers and, and listeners can know uh, what are the points that, that, that you discuss or the paper discuss with you are, what you put forward, what the PPA will be doing once elected into government or will be um, um, uh, really looking or screaming out for in yes. Parliament once they, you know, let me start saying first that Parliament, being yeah. in Parliament, yes. Correct, correct. Um, indeed, um, I think all, all parties received uh, a questionnaire yeah. uh, from the Herald and we um, submitted our, our questions um, and we're very grateful for that platform. Yeah. Um, it is a fact, though, that um, this is a parliamentary elections, and yeah. you're, you're going to elect the 15 members of parliament. Yes. And the people of St. Martin are, ha have expressed to us their discontent for yet another election in a very short time. Mm -hmm. And since parliament is about legislation, and given the experience that we've had in the very short campaign trail, um, I have come to the conclusion that one of the first things we're going to do, so apart from the, the hardcore issues that are still stuck in the pipeline of Parliament and um, issues that we need to really take care of now going forward in yeah. the next uh, four years, um, is voting and the instability of government. Um, it was a very strange experience, and I really want our audiences to understand that it has been very hard for the voters indeed, and we need to build back that trust uh, between the voters and the politicians. Yeah. Um, but I want us to understand as well, for political parties, uh, especially those who are not in office, it was extremely hard yeah. to put two years, because that those were the two years left of the four, to put two years in three months. Yeah. And especially if those three months fall at the end of the year, um, it's a time, a period where people are preparing for their family reunions, you know, yeah. um, getting resolutions ready. Yeah. And here comes uh, uh, politicians, uh, here comes uh, persons who say, at least from my point, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, um, wishing you a prosperous New Year. And at the same time, uh, can you vote? Or will yeah. you vote? Yeah. And that gave me such a, a, a bad taste. Um, knowing what they are feeling yeah. and 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 feeling, in, I felt like I was encroaching yeah. um, on their territory yeah, to yeah. have peace at the end of the yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that brought me to one of the first um, issues that PPA um, will bring to the floor is um, adapting the the uh, electoral ordinance that um, and if necessary. Because there are so many issues too that we could that have been discussed in terms of the constitution that mm. needs to be um, that needs to be amended. The electoral law for amended in such a way that elections does not fall at the end of the year yeah. and does not fall during hurricane season. The last um, before this last yeah so many election was uh, September 
2000, September 26, 2017. Um, yeah, it was during hurricane season. And during that time as well, people were complaining, you know, it's hurricane season. People are trying to get, uh, get their homes uh, um, ready. I, re I remember that some of the, the, the billboards were up already. And there was a, a, a winter um, flash. And some of these things fell down very dangerously, especially on the Colby Hill. Given this experience and um, knowing what we must do in terms of remedying, fixing those uh, issues that are affecting our electorate um, in terms of legislation, I want to propose in Parliament to amend uh, <laughs> electoral law that even if you throw down government, because that can still happen, yeah. and we're going to try to mitigate that, but even if you throw down government, the law um, states that um, there's a certain period that elections cannot be held. Um, it's like almost like school kids you know um, something happens so you need to remedy it um, you behaving like a small like a school child so you need to put rules and regulations to stop it yeah it's a pity uh, the bad have to sorry the good have to pay for um, for the bad and, and we need to keep adjusting as we evolve constitutionally and also politically <coughs> as a country um, after having experienced 10 years of this new status since 10, 10, 10. You know, you used the word just now, um, discontent and mistrust. But I have another question. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that political parties, and uh, I'm now I'm hearing you speaking about amending the law, the electoral laws and all of that. Don't you think then that political parties is given the people let me use the right word false hope by, <laughs> by, by, by believing <laughs> that this whole thing about ship jumping that they can solve this by putting the isolation in place not entirely um, what you can do is um, amend the, re the legislation as I just mentioned for example um, with, uh, with the dates right mm -hmm. in terms of if you throw down government and uh, it just happens to be in October mm -hmm. or September and we have the 90 days period that you need to uh, that we need to adhere to yeah you know from beforehand that you want to ch you want to throw down government you're not gonna get elections at the end of the year that's not gonna happen so that's one of the things um, you cannot legislate integrity as I mentioned also a couple of days ago yeah um, so those persons who um, get on a slate I, I really hope the people of, of St. Martin really look very very carefully those people who are on the slate those people who are in government right now and in Parliament right now who cause this entire um, uh, the, the discomfort yes. and yeah. mess that we're going through um, do not vote for them because your behavior is showing that you have absolutely no regard for the electorate mm -hmm. and and for the stability and continuity of the country so um, whatever is motivating some of our colleagues some of our uh, the people who postulate themselves to run for office I, I, I really hope that the electorate um, take pause and look at I look at these uh, candidates some of them postulated themselves again as if yeah. nothing happened uh, knowing the the, the uh, discomfort the dissolution that it caused for our people um, I think to a great extent mr. Butte uh, regretfully the uh, monetary issue that salary issue I know it keeps coming up um, is 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 a is a bad magnet for uh, persons postulating I say that because during the last um, uh, governing accords uh, with, with the governor um, and the discussions in Parliament one of the discussions was reduce the salary of the MPs and to 10 percent I think that was one of the proposals yeah. and up to today that hasn't happened yeah only only individual uh, politicians um, said okay they will take out 10 percent and give it randomly to um, certain foundations or persons that is not legislating and structurally reducing your salary mm -hmm. especially 
in, in, in um, empathizing um, with the people of St. Martin who went through this devastating um, hurricane. Mm -hmm. So the PPA um, discussed with all members. So before they signed, before they signed, I brought it up and we said, listen, we need to be in solidarity with the people of St. Martin. Uh, there are still many people who don't have a jobs, don't have jobs, uh, in within, even within one family. And to be in solidarity with them, we will reduce our salary once elected uh, between 30 and 40 percent, uh, which will still give you about six to seven thousand dollars a month, you know, for that position because mm -hmm. it is it is a, a very um, uh, responsible position, and that will be more in line with the Secretary General's. Uh, scale 17, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, Secretary Generals who enjoy this type of salary. 10% um, won't cut it. If you want to really give solidarity to the people, you need to show that by legislation. You need to show that by um, immediately, um, together with all 15, all 15 members, reduce the salary structurally. Now, I know that some politicians are saying no. They not they don't want to do that um, because that's what the the, the um, law stipulates. We are lawmakers, and as a lawmaker, you can amend that same ordinance to ensure that um, that salary structure is reduced. And with that money, some are saying, "Yeah, but you can't. It's it's a drop in the bucket." How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Right? So we start with small incremental steps that shows the people that you really mean um, to be their representative. You're really in solidarity with them by showing that you will um, adapt because they have adapted. And as you go along as, your, as a, member of, uh, a member of parliament, you go about producing those policies and programs that would increase the quality of life of our people. You know, the ordinary man will say, um, yes, you know, I agree with all what you have said. Mm -hmm. The professional... And I mean what I said. Yes. <laughs> and I know. They will say, I love what, 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 what Rasia Tarandel just said about the... the Salary. The, 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 that members of parliament should give in and... and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and but now a, a, a professional now will say when he do the numbers he will say listen for me it's nonsense cutting 10 percent from a, a from from a, from a, a, his salary is at the end of the day when i do the math uh, out of the 15 candidates is 324,000 guilders and we're talking about a budget of let's say 450 million guilders that's correct you know uh what influence? You, what influence are you talking about? It's a huge you influence. Know? It's a huge no, influence. No, but mentally, I mean, yes. mentally, it's a huge influence. But, but also materially, it's a huge influence because you mentioned a budget. Indeed, a budget, a stagnant budget of between four hundred twenty and four hundred fifty, um, uh, four hundred fifty million dollars a year for the past ten years. So it's not even a growth budget, and also Mr. Butte, uh, a budget that's that has been supplemented through liquidity support by the Dutch government. So our members of parliament in those 10 years, and I'll come, I'll come back to that point, uh, in those 10 years have not really, really pushed. That is what I'm missing, and that is what the people of St. Martin are missing in their, represent in their representation. Uh, in Dutch, you use the word datracht, yeah. uh, working expeditiously, um, you know, and especially for that salary. So that drop in the bucket, that 350 million, uh, so 350,000 dollars, we are in dire need of, for example, legal specialists in that same government, in same government, meaning in general. Yeah, for, uh, for, 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 for yes, parliament. Yes, parliament, yeah. but also in government, also yeah. at, the, at the Council of Ministers, that havings, jurisdiction, legal analysts. Yeah, yeah. We don't have them. We have two. So um, that, side, that portion could go towards attracting our young people um, who want to come back, who have that background, to come and support strengthen our government apparatus to uh, prepare uh, the laws better and faster because there's a huge gap in that. So to me, the philosophy is no matter how small and 
$250,000 or $400,000 or even a half a million guilders um, uh, in salary reduction. It's not only 10%, it could be 34% as far as I'm concerned, so as the PP is concerned. That money can absolutely um, um, pay towards the salary of two or three top silver servants, our silver servants, who can also feed their family. It's a cycle. While bringing us the expertise, the dire expertise that we need in preparing our laws. That is absolutely um, um, a, necessary, a, a necessity and it is absent. We have two, as far as I could have remembered uh, last couple of months, two legal experts, three vet havens in, in government. The ones that we've had in the last couple of uh, years, whatever is happening in government, they left one by one. So on the one hand, we are asking, the, the government is asking our young people, um, yes, come back because we have jobs. And when, you, when they reach, you're confronted with a budget, that with a shortfall, and with a personnel stop. Because that is what you keep hearing as well from government. Oh, but there's a personnel stop, especially for, for top uh, positions, so we cannot pay that salary. And what happens? Our people go back to Holland. They don't want to be in Holland. Most of them really want to come home. St. Martin is a great place. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful place. And I find that we, and I'm so passionate about this, that we need to fight harder. Um, the road to success is not easy. It never was for anyone. You, you look at the biographies of very successful men and women around the world you always get confronted with um, naysayers and haters and, and uh, persons who try to block you. But if you have a, a, a positive mind and a determination and objecti objective to um, be successful for yourself and for the country, then there's nothing that can stop you. You know, I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah, I'm a human being. <laughs> Um, in terms of that, and not only you, but also the other candidates uh, are, 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 are tired because you, um, you want to um, really reach as many people as you can to convince them not to give up on St. Martin. And um, what, what drives me is knowing what's happening in the rest of the world and knowing that we have a beautiful country and seeing the stagnation, the politicking, that keeps throwing us into this um, cycle of elections all the time. That is what drives me to say, no, we can do better, and uh, to leave a legacy behind for the next generation. St. So Martin has become uh, so divisive. Um, I want to, with our party, g uh, get, get the, the people together um, in Parliament. Um, we got that opportunity in 2010. Uh, when I was the first uh, uh, president of parliament. If anyone thinks it was a walk in the park to get your colleagues, and you know that, Mr. Butte, yeah. to come to parliament and sign in and discuss the laws and then up amend them or approve them, that required a certain discipline and skill to think further and to... to um, converse, to communicate with, the with, your, with your colleagues in such a way that once they do show up and sign in, mind you, they've been paid to do that, but once they do sh show up and sign in, to sit and delib deliberate the, the laws and pass them. And I want to remind the people of St. Martin that we did that to a great extent between 2010 and 2014. That is one of the reasons why most of the old Antillian laws um, that yeah. that we had that passed over, that passed over. and yeah. we had to do that had we not done that had we not had uh, the fortitude and the skills to um and the discipline together with that first parliament to pass those laws mr butte and and radio listeners we would have been in more problems today than then because those first um laws that we took over from the old Antillian parliaments were very critical to uh, St. Martin um, discussing the, 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 the civil code, the penal yeah, code, yeah. et cetera. Thank God that was done. And all we had to do, all the consecutive parliaments after that, so after 2014, had to do 
was go over the list, and it, it is being done, but very slowly, yeah. and amending where it had to be amended, uh, uh, et cetera. So, um, <coughs> sorry, it's not an easy task, but once you're in it for the right reason, and that is coming back to the, um, the, the part of stability and the type of politicians that we keep electing into parliament, um, we need persons with integrity to go into parliament and persons who have a certain work ethic to get the job done. It's not a nine-to-five job. Um, it's a 24-hour, so to speak, job. Um, and for that amount of money, one of the highest within the kingdom, um, that, that I think that's the least you can do as a member of parliament, show up to work. And if you're not working, go into the communities, uh, the districts, find out what's happening. Samarit is not large. Find out what's happening in the districts and bring that to the um, different permanent committees that we have. Bring in the community councils uh, uh, persons and then do what we need to do to increase the quality of life of, of, of people. That's how simple it is, okay. in fact. Now, you just used a very important word. Increase the quality of life of people. Yes. The only thing that will make the quality of life of people much better mm -hmm. if the economy is doing good. Mm. Once the economy is doing good, government have, have more revenues, people pay more taxes, and then where government spread that income to do all the things then that will make their citizens' quality of life better. Mm -hmm. What are the plans? Before we reach to ask what are our plans, yeah. the central bank uh, last um, um, report gave us a had a growth of, of even though with all these problems as again had a growth of one point uh, if I'm not saying one point nine percent growth or one point five percent growth yeah, in two thousand nineteen first two thousand nineteen two thousand eighteen eighteen nineteen eighteen yeah. yeah. Um, and when you read through also, it says uh, if we have uh, annual growth of 3%, 3% yeah. we will do extremely good for the next. Correct. What is PPA plan to grow the economy <laughs> at least yeah. more than the 1.5%? I'm not going to put it 3% cheaper. Oh, it it's a lot. Be. No, it's, it, it's achievable. Yeah. It's achievable. What but is your PPA plan to the okay. people? But there, there are two things. First, you need to elect the persons. Because again, we're going back to experience the past 10 years. You need to really elect persons into parliament who are going to focus to ensure that we have a stable government for four years. That's to start with. Okay. Because in not only that central bank report, but there are other reports, uh, Transparency International from yeah. 2015, 2017, that shows that that instability in government is holding back investors. Yeah. Local and foreign investors. Yeah. I know because I have, spo I have spoken to them over the past couple of years, so, uh, notwithstanding elections. Yeah. Um, so that number one, let's keep focus on that. Your members that you're elected in parliament and then consequently uh, the, uh, the ministers that you're appointing. So stability is very important. Um, secondly, from government side, I'm going to start with the government, government owned companies, for example, GBE increasing the quality of life of persons by reducing the cost of living. Um, I know that the fuel clause, I'm just going to touch with it briefly yeah. on the briefly and then go on the, um, the part of the economy, stimulating the economy. Um, so starting with government first, yeah. uh, reducing the, the um, fuel clause or eliminating it. I know that the anti-poverty uh, platform also has that in their plans. I mean, I, I I received that plan uh, a couple of months ago, and I read it. I, I could remember that, but not not really focusing on the fact that we, a group of us, in April started, so long before we knew elections were coming, uh, started a group to discuss this fuel clause reduction slash elimination. Um, because that's one of the things that we have encountered that people are saying, what do we do? You know, yes, there's a small... Uh, plan that GB gives to um, seniors and some other citizens, but across the board, it is eating into the purchasing power of people. So, um, as Parliament, 
as a politically responsible entity towards our government-owned companies, I think we need to sit with, the, with management and board uh, because their families, we have to pay the fuel clause as well. But again, it's a political uh, decision to call in the, the, the boards and management and discuss. Anyway, this is the issue. You come with a proposal. We don't want, we meaning politicians should not sit on the chair of a CEO. We went through that in the past before 10, 10, 10. Yeah. We had the legislations uh, for that, and I was part of that, um, pushing to have an uh, arm's length from politicians on the seat of the CEOs. But when policies are hurting your citizens, you need to reverse and, and at least s get back on the table and discuss that part that is really um, eating into the purchasing power. Okay, diversification, uh, uh, stimulating the economy. I absolutely believe in a growth budget, Mr. Butte. Yeah. We have to have a growth budget 2010 going forward. The past 10 years of a, a median budget of 420 uh, gilders we're talking about yeah. to, to uh, 450 is nothing and supplemented by liquidity support as conditions to get more funds from Holland from the Netherlands. Any self-respecting um, political leader, candidate, member, member for parliament will do everything possible to push um, for the growth of especially small businesses. At the same time, you um, have to stimulate the, the uh, direct foreign investment. Why? Because St. Martin is small. We cannot keep relying on the same businesses here, like the huge hotel chains. Um, what else is there? And government, you yeah. know, in terms of the biggest employers of, 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 uh, of our people. Yeah. You need to stimulate small, small businesses. How do you do that? Um, cutting the red tape. You know, I was in Holland a couple of uh, last year, and uh, for uh, family reasons, um, dire family reasons, and God is good. Everything went well, and everything there is automated. Uh, my nieces and nephews tell me, Auntie Sita, I don't go into a government building or wherever and stand in line. We are part of the Dutch Kingdom. We have our students who are working there, living there, who have ideas how to, how to um, make doing business much, much easier. We have had the discussions of connecting um, the tax department with, uh, with uh, yes. um, uh, we call with it receivers, receivers uh, and chain of economic commerce. Dude, sorry, when? It is ridiculous. Even as a, as a small business um, owner, when you go stand in line, yes, everyone is friendly, they want to help, but the fact that you still have to get out of your house, drive through traffic, go and stand in line to do your stuff, it, go, it can go much, much faster. So um, increase the, the, sorry, cut the red tape mm -hmm. in doing business. Um, um, give funds to the Small Business Development Foundation. I, I hear discussions of um, in involving the um, National Recovery uh, uh, Bureau. Bureau. And I was like, but we do have an organization there that exists, as you know, right, for years. The Social Economic Council um, um, where, where that gives advice, yeah. but also the Small Business Development Foundation. What happened to that? Um, Mr. Gibson, and I'm not Show stop the when Mr. Gibson was I mem, uh, Minister of Finance, mm -hmm. he stopped the the funding the funding to that wow. institution, and that institution died uh, a natural death a natural death. You see, so and and that is that is one of the issues again that keeps plaguing our country continuity. You cannot from one side, end of your mouth, speak about stimulating small businesses. And you are in government. You have been in government in terms of um, having the ministers of, of tourism and economic affairs and uh, Vromi, etc. And you will let a small business development foundation die a natural death. And on the other side, you're saying, oh, we have a new organization and that organization is going to um, uh, use some of the trust fund money to stimulate businesses. Let me tell you something. After the hurricane, so many small businesses closed. Um, I know that from experience. Um, while waiting on some 
support from that same trust fund. And I want to make a, a comparison with uh, SABA. The SABA government received, I think, 30 million euros, sorry, dollars, because they have the dollar as a yeah. currency, to small businesses. A couple of months after Irma, those businesses that could show that they have been that they registered yeah. and that they pay tax, etc., they received that support. That's how they survived. And here in St. Martin, we had to wait. We had to wait on the red tape. We had to wait on the whims of, of the political parties um, looking at each other and not focusing on the businesses. That's why um, that growth has been, has been slow, and that's why that growth has been one-sided because most of it came from the construction, yeah. you know, from building construction, the, the, um, the, the stores that sell yeah. material. That's where that, that growth came from. But overall... Overall, when you speak to persons, and again, on a personal issue, that growth was absolutely stagnant and zero for many business years that went belly up. Um, so from the PPS perspective, we will re-focus um, uh, our attention and put in funds into the Small Business Development Foundation, appoint persons who want to work and who want to push that uh, foundation and uh, make sure that that foundation is linked to the different communities uh, because our communities are um, void of new small business uh, development. Yeah. Our view, our, our, our plans, uh, especially for the communities of Dutch Quarter, Belvedere, um, Colby has quite some activity, so more in Dutch Quarter and Belvedere to have a small business development plan, discuss it with the community councils there because you cannot just give a economic license yeah. to anything and anywhere, a garage, not a garage, at the end of the road, you know, and you see all of the debris and stuff like that. No, in a very structural way. So our vision um, and our plans is to stimulate small businesses in these communities. And you will see how, how uh, Dutch Quarter and Belvedere will, will, um, will flourish. Yeah. There's only one, um, if you um, drive around, there's only one large supermarket just close to the roundabout between Dutch Quarter and, and uh, uh, Belvedere, and then a few more others going up, but mm -hmm. they're supermarkets. They're not other type of businesses that the community could profit from that would increase there again the quality yeah. of life and experiences in these communities um we are so we are so looking forward to give these communities um that that vision and um execute it into policy and programs that they could see on the short term you're in government you have the power to give economic licenses business licenses but if you just sit and wait for Positively, positively, mm -hmm. for persons who say, okay, I want a license to start another barber shop or another, um, uh, what do you call it, car wash. Yeah. While if you sit as a government and you say, you know what, in this community we are in dire need of certain other uh, businesses. I'm not going to mention some because there are some that I, I know is going to catch on yeah. you know, in these communities. Um, that's what you need to do. Daadkracht, as I mentioned earlier, so being expeditiously, having that vision and the pla plans and policies to, to get it done. Once you do that, government will have the revenues to do what their core job is, which is making sure that the infrastructure is, is, is uh, adequate. People don't mind paying taxes, Mr. Butte. What they are upset about is you're paying taxes and you're driving through potholes and breaking your car every month and going to the garage to fix these with monies that you don't have or very little money that you have. So the core, core job of government is to facilitate by using the, um, the monies that you collect through taxes in improving the quality of our infrastructure. And that infrastructure overall is so dilapidated it is so discouraging that it hurts. I, you know, I had a friend who used to live here. She came on, on vacation. And I, we were driving around. I took her to some places that she had to go to. And this is real personal experience. And while driving, at a given point in time, she asked me to um, 
she asked me to, you know, uh, stop, stop. She said, Zita, she calls me Zita, she said, stop. I pulled aside, she said, I said, what's wrong? She said, you are, you are so upset of what you're seeing. Um, I didn't realize that, that I commented on every road, every structure, because I don't know St. Martin like this. St. Martin was, was cleaner, um, nicer, people were more polite, and it affected me without knowing that it affected me. And um, we, we have to do better. I mean, there, there's no other way, there's no other choice and, and do that. So on January 9th, um, 2020, um, this tour is upcoming. We are urging the people of St. Martin to please, please do not stay home. Turn your disappointment into um, a vote, a convincing vote to elect uh, the People's Progressive Alliance into Parliament and uh, so that we can get the job done that have been elusive to our people for a very long time. It doesn't mean that nothing has been done, but so much more can be done in a shorter period of time that would give people the hope and respect back. Um, and, uh, one of the things um, that um, you illustrated um, in your, you know, in the interview with the, the paper this morning, um, it's about education, mm -hmm. and you said, if I could, 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 could touch my memories well, that education is in shambles. Yes. And we have to get everything, in. but uh, people will ask uh, if it's so horrible with the, the education, mm -hmm. and the education also is the biggest. Uh, um, Budget I line item. Yes, mm -hmm. that, that takes more money from out of our budget. Correct. Uh, so it will cost more in the future. And that's why I asked you the first and how you will do to stimulate the economy mm -hmm. because these things will be needed. What different will you do with the budget you have right now? Mm -hmm. Because to be honest with you, the budget won't change much for the 2020 budget won't change much when it comes to figures, maybe a 10 or 20, 30 million more, but... Well, that's a, that's a big amount, 20, 20, 30 million. It is a big amount that you yeah, can do a lot with. See, <laughs> see the expenditures of government? Yeah. You know, I don't see much will go to, let's say, mm -hmm. a 10 million. If I get 20 million more, I don't see a 10 million going to, to do education. Mm -hmm. So, because the expenditures are, are huge, and, 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 and so we will have a deficit again. Well, what will be the PPA policy with that limitation of money we have towards education? Okay. You know, everything starts with a thought. Yeah. So if you go into the policy making and the decision making process with a thought of, oh, we don't have the money, um, then you're going about it the wrong way. Yeah. Because not having the money is a given. But if you focus on the, on the, um, the solutions, um, to get that extra money, that's a start. So the thought is the first step towards action. You will need to sit, back, sit again um, at the round table with the, the educators, so all the stakeholders okay. in that regard, um, to revisit that budget because I am sure you put it into the hands of the experts. I'm sure that in those discussions, we can come to a compromise as to where the cuts have to be done because there are certain things I'm sure that are redundant and where you can redirect the, um, the funds that are there and also get new funds from outside to supplement the educational budget. Um, technology in our schools is lacking, diary. And our kids are very technology technology savvy. Yeah. So you need to support the teachers. You need to make sure that the, the school infrastructure is in such a way that um, education becomes more in line with the 21st mm -hmm. century, so to speak. We can get budget, Mr. Butte, uh, uh, extra monies to supplement um, the extracurricular activities for our kids to increase the, the output of um, decrease the output of school dropouts and increase the, the, the school success rate. Yeah. 
by redirecting certain funds. For example, we have so many lottery uh, um, uh, companies on St. Martin, yeah. Yeah. all over, and it seems like they are springing up you know, on every corner again. What stops any government from redirecting that portion of money yeah. that they're collecting towards education, specifically towards education? And with that, I mean education, not only the, the technology, um, in, um, investing in technology in yeah. the schools, but also in sports, you know, uh, having a real sports program for the kids, yeah. and making sure that the teachers, the teachers get the tools to, um, to educate our kids. So getting extra funds from the lottery, including the Lance Lottery. Lance Lottery is an institution still, old remnants of the former Netherlands Antilles constellation. And I was very happy to see uh, of late, as of late, because I know we, we PPA commented on that a couple of months ago and before that, what happens to the proceeds of Lance Lottery? A few times when I was in Curacao, you see in the newspapers every time Lance Lottery gives to this uh, foundation, to that foundation, to charity organizations mm -hmm. on a constant basis. And I'm very happy to see as of late that, uh, especially around December, mm -hmm. I saw that um, certain foundations receive funds. It should be structural. So it, it is a matter of, again, focusing on what you want short term on the revenue streams that are there. Yeah. This, this isn't even inventing something else yeah. and redirecting that money towards education. Um. Can I mention another thing in terms of yeah, yeah. <laughs> STEM education and, and our kids? Um, we have a lot of smart kids in St. Martin. Yeah. And um, not everyone is academically inclined, yeah. but a lot of our kids are very smart with their hands and with their, their talents. Um, we have finally uh, the NEPA institution, but we also have the St. Martin Vocational School and, uh, and the um, Sundial School. I notice in the, in the newspaper ads that they're looking for so many persons, but I still encounter persons who really want to work, make no mistake. We know of persons who just like, you know what, whatever, yeah. you know, they get something and they don't show up. We know that you always have that category. But our focus is on the category of those who really want to work and who can't get a job. And they look at the fake ads in the newspaper, and when they show up, it's like, oh, it's already taken. Yeah. We need to cut that out. So Martin is small. We know exactly what's happening, and we can tackle that, that issue. There are, in terms of stimulating businesses and cutting the red tape, there are uh, many um, uh, restaurants, also uh, quality restaurants, that are looking for, for chefs, you know, for cooks, for pastry uh, chefs, for bakers. And um, our, our uh, uh, kids, our students in that field, in the hospitality industry, they could make a very, very good living if we um, recruit some more good teachers to be at the NIPA and at the um, other vocational schools, vocational training schools, to make sure that we have a continuity in that respect as well. Because you hear very often that, oh, the teacher, they left, they went back to wherever, um, or they went into a different field. So as the educational department, we need to um, have a, a, a part of that department to monitor the link between the employment, so VSR, and yeah. education, to um, ensure full employment under the youth uh, coming out of schools to get that hands-on training to be uh, a, a cook in Indian cuisine or in Chinese cuisine. You understand the ads that keep coming out? Yeah. Like, how would you do that if you don't train our kids in that cuisine? And they are here. Yeah. They are here. When you're, in, um, when you're in Amsterdam and you go to a restaurant, there are people from all backgrounds yeah. who are making the best Mexican cuisine, yeah. <laughs> the best Turkish cuisine, etc. So we can do the same. What does it require? Focus, vision, action in terms of the people who you elect to sit and work. Getting elected and you're working from nine to five won't cut it. If you want to jumpstart our economy 
and give the people here, whether it's the, the local investors as well as the foreign investors, that hope. People are waiting. They're like, okay, it's a new year, new elections coming up. What are you going to do? What, what new will St. Martin bring to the table? And what PPA wants to bring to the table is energy, great plans, executable plans, plans that are worked out together with the local community. We are so lucky that we are only 37 square miles, and I'm including the French side in this case. We are so lucky that geographically, while we are in a hurricane belt, that we are in such a, uh, a regional um, location that we um, are easy to reach and attract those tourists and attract those um, investors that are necessary for St. Martin. The handful of people that we have, Mr. Butte, should not be suffering. And with that, I'm going to go into the, the, the social uh, disparity that we have in St. Martin. The handful of people we have on St. Martin should not go through the poverty level that they're going through, uh, the social housing uh, uh, problems that we're going through. We can count these people. If you go into the different neighborhoods, it's not 100 million people. It's not even 100,000 people, for God's sake. That is one of the issues that always puzzles me. I was never a minister. I was never a commissioner. You know, PPA never yeah. had such a presentation because we, we were very fortunate to have that one seat um, once, and we really were the opposition in those days when representing St. Martin. We would like to have enough seats in Parliament and by so influencing the ministries to put persons there who are going to work. And as I said, we are so blessed that our island is small that we can grasp the issues that we're faced with. If you work with a vision and the, 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 the action to make those changes, I hope, and I know we can, in this year going forward, uh, because I tend to, to forget that we are in a new year, <laughs> it's going so fast, um, in this year going forward, that by December 2020, our communities, our senior citizens, all the persons who are living in Belvedere who still don't have home ownership um, that, that were promised to them uh, 13, 14 years ago, that after a certain period of, of, of time, five years I think it was at the time, that you will be able to own your own home. There's so many of those people still in Belvedere where their roofs leaking, uh, etc., who still do not have home ownership. And PPA, while we campaigned on that in 2007, we hope we can get that support to make that a reality because that is all what it takes, keeping your word, keeping your word and your promises that you made to the people. Um, getting that trust back, we can only get it back by getting that opportunity to be in. So by December 2020, our vision is to see the communities um, clean, yeah. um, decorated, decorate you know for Christmas this is one of the saddest and darkest Christmases I've seen you know um, apart from a few uh, 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 networks here and there it was it wasn't that spirit that that positiveness that we have been accustomed to uh, you know before the past 10 years I'm talking about money to help decorate and do this stuff again let's think practical um, if I may from my foundation point of view Peridot Foundation as much as we could over the past years, we have decorated the uh, um, Cahill roundabout, where the statue of domestic violence uh, stands. Yeah. And we did it for two purposes, because um, 16 days of activism against, uh, for the awareness of uh, violence against women and children uh, starts uh, November uh, the 26th until December 10th. And because during holidays, there's always, and that's a fact, increase in violence. And we took that opportunity to ask the uh, sponsors of the roundabout if we could make use of the electricity, etc., to not only decorate, but put light on that issue. So it's a two-way sword. So again, uh, the, the Peridot Foundation, uh, thank you, Jackie and Betty, um, and the two a welder and a, an electrician really did their best and the, the sponsors to the lights because it's ex it's expensive to bring light 
in that area. Could you imagine if he didn't do it this year again, how dark that spot would have been? If you combine it with what has been happening the past uh, year, where um, most of the, the lamps, the lights have been out, um, the street lights, I don't know what that issue is, but we need to get to the bottom of that. St. Martin is dark. Um, so 2020, December, we are going to make sure that all of those roundabouts are decorated. We can do that together okay. with the community councils um, and, uh, and, and government. It's not that expensive. If you plan after these holidays, April, May, when we are elected, we will ensure that we have containers of, uh, of um, these decorative lights because it's cheaper to buy them during that time and uh, work together with the community councils to have them there and then let them decorate and clean up their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. 2020 should be uh, December, a year of, of enlightenment, of lights, of cleanliness, and of happy people and happy faces once we execute the social housing program and the cleaning up of, of St. Martin. St. Martin, ladies and gentlemen, is filthy. Please stop throwing your garbage out next to the garbage bins when you have garbage bins there, Mr. Butte. You see that so often. Yeah, but it's a, it's a, it's a question of educating the people. I'm, uh, yeah, and I'm also in. finding them. It's yeah. a question of, of, policing. of um, policing and maintenance because um, kept keeping St. Martin clean is a, is a community responsibility. Yeah. And if you clean and your neighbor says, well, I don't care, then your neighbor have to be fined. Yeah. You know, uh, this is a country still ruled uh, governed by the rule of law, yeah. and we need to uh, stimulate the, the, the police organization uh, and or, or in a different format. The format isn't important, but the execution is important to make sure that littering and just throwing stuff all over the place, having stray dogs, if you don't want your dogs, you just put them out there. All of these things have to stop, and it can. It can. If we, if we become a community that is more caring and that has leadership in office that um, work together with the communities to uh, make St. Martin a better place. Uh, this is our place and I love it. Like you do. Um, <laughs> yes, definitely. Definitely. We live in St. Martin and I love St. Martin. Yeah. Um, you, you said s uh, something there very the important and, and you said um, Creating that, uh, let me follow, let me see what I wrote, yes. Creating, we've been speaking, let me put it like this. Mm -hmm. For years, we have been speaking of making St. Martin this particular economic hub. Yes. For years, we've been speaking of bringing brands, hotels to oh, St. Yes. Martin. For years, we've been speaking of all of these things. Correct. And from the day we became country, to date, hmm. the only pillar in our economy that have grown is the cruise tourism. Uh, ah, and it's going and it's going to decrease with twenty five percent. Yeah, it, that have grown is a cruise tourism. Even yeah. if it have grown after Hurricane Ava, it shows some <coughs> growth Sorry. again. Mm -hmm. But what will the PPA do different and make sure it happens? Mm -hmm. Because everybody was saying they're going to happen. They're going that that part of the economy yes the, 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 that we we can depend now and yes. become like an example in Aruba <coughs> that have brand name hotels br not only brand name hotels mm -hmm. but 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 that but have a comfort that have a comfort of 70 percent occupancy year long that's correct that's correct you know what will be what PPA will do to guarantee the economy to guarantee the people of St. Martin yes. that they can strive St. Martin in that direction for a better economy? I am so mm. happy with that question. You know, one of our strengths uh, in terms of our leadership is network. Yeah. We spoke about foreign direct investment because you do need that. And I know for a fact, because it happened, that we have been in contact, for example, with the Ritz Carlton. It is sad indeed that um, since then or even before that we have been clamoring for that to have five star hotels here on St. Martin and to have that you need to have um, credibility you need to have integrity because make no mistake these top class 
five-star hotels. They have a certain um, uh, integrity policy that they don't make jokes with. Yeah. You know, because uh, based on the, the, the structure of the CEO and the accountability yeah. to the stock market, etc. So I have been in discussion with the Ritz Carlton CEO. Okay. And, um, and not only with, with the CEO, the new one at the time, but also with others. I was in Parliament at the time. Yeah. And I learned. You say, okay, I, I'm in Parliament, but I, we have a government, so the contacts will go via, you know, the ministers of of so, uh, oh, theat. of theat, etc. And then I hear nothing. So, what do we need to attract design names? They are there. What do we need is leadership that has accountability, mm -hmm. leadership that has integrity that when you do sit with these international investors, that they know that they're sitting with persons who will um, uh, discuss your, your, your product, your brand, your five yeah. star, with, the, with the, the plans of government, the, the, the laws of government, and that they will be adhered to. That behind the scenes that certain things won't be changed. That they know that, okay, this is what you're gonna get as an incentive, and that is what you're gonna get. So it starts again, Mr. Butte, with your leadership in office, the contacts that you have with these third parties, and the integrity and the guarantee that when you sit at the table with these investors, that they know that they are uh, that they're speaking with persons who will make sure that those plans go through without changing, because they will pull out in a New York second. The same Ritz Carlton is now in Anguilla. And they have a policy in terms of geographic uh, locations, yeah. uh, pr proximity. And at the time, you only had a risk out in, in Nevis. And, and that discussion uh, took place, like, you know, uh, there's one there, but St. Martin is a great opportunity. Then it happened, risk out in, is in um, uh, Anguilla. And there's, uh, there's a young lady who is one of the financial um, CEOs of that brand in Anguilla. So we can do it. We can do it if you have persons in office who are in there for the right reasons. I believe in the potential of St. Martin. There are investors who still believe in the potential of St. Martin, but we need to get our acts together. Cleaning, cleaning up St. Martin, because doing all of these tours, and St. Martin is one big wreck, one big filthy place. You need to call a spade a spade. It is filthy. Uh, roundabouts are destroyed, they, they're not fixed because we don't, we're not putting the money into showing our tourists a, a clean product. Um, so the plan is sit within six months, we go over the priorities of uh, cleaning up St. Martin, yeah. making it safer and cleaner, but at the same time, because it's not like we do this today and then tomorrow, at the same time, you have a group of people, including the business sector, with you, because you can only do this together, who are going to together um, identify um, and attract those brand name hotels? The tourism bureau um, has to be yeah. uh, has to be and uh, board and pushed into the direction that you want to, you know, in terms of the vision that you want for St. Martin brand name hotels. But your product has to be clean, it has to be safe, and it has to be executable, both for the citizens as for the investors. So, um, again, it is a great opportunity to um, be part of this electoral process, even though it was, it, it was very, very strenuous on the electorate, but you have a choice as a voter. Please, we ask you to come out on Thursday, um, come out early and give PPA your support. We can do this. I'm a very optimis optimistic person. We have a team of candidates who are ready to work. Um, give us that opportunity. January 9th, 2020, and by this time next year, we will see a totally different St. Martin. God bless you. God bless the people of St. Martin, and see you at the polls. And ladies and gentlemen, those are the words of the leader of the PPA, convincing you and asking you to come out on the 9th of January to put your ballot and make that red yeah. note. In the circle, not in outside. The, inside the <laughs> circle behind of anyone, especially the leader of the PPA. Thank you. Uh, 
in the circle, you know, that's very important yeah. because when you put, even if you like a, a, a particular a party on that ballot, if you uh, put anything else on that it, it invalid. will become invalid. Yes. So you're not going to do any party yeah. a favor if you put uh, right anything, if you write anything on just it. So yeah. just circle inside of the, the name of your preferred candidate. And in this case, of course, we are um, asking for your vote, your support, and your trust because we will earn your trust after January 9th once we are in office. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again, Ms. Garcita Arundel. And we had that whole hour, as we can see, Tyrone. It went so fast. Yes, it gone so fast. And ladies and gentlemen, we will take a break now because we will have another candidate in another couple of, about 20 minutes from now. Thank you very much. Thank you.